and I would just I divide five uh, subtitles. The first, I just want to say the definition of the word Buddhism itself. Second, the core of the Buddha's teaching. The third, the study of Magasacha. Then four, the goal of the Buddha's teaching. Here the Magasacha, a third subtitle. After this, we will do sitting meditation for uh, 20 minutes. Are you ready? Is everybody ready? If anyone who is going against the sitting meditation. <laughs> and here, the third subtitle, the study of Magasacha, then we will do 20 minutes meditation, then the goal of the Buddha's teaching. And therefore, I will explain how to do walking meditation. At the first 20 minutes sitting, after 20 minutes sitting meditation, we will have a Q&A section. It, it is not a clear on the technique that I'm trying to say. Or if you practice, when you practice, if it's something not a clear, then you can ask. <clears throat> then we will learn uh, in a fourth, fourth, we will learn walking meditation. Then we will go down for walking meditation and practical approach to the Eightfold Noble Path. 20 minutes walking meditation down in Shrine Hall. Then we will come up again. Then I will show you the, the secular benefits of the meditation nowadays discovered by many scientific research. I think you probably already have known it. This is what I'm going to do now already. So shall we start now with the Namo Tassa together? Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahadu Samma Sambuddhasa Buddham Saranam Gachami Say Buddham Saranam Gachami Dhammam Saranam Gachami Sangam Saranam Gachami Tudiyambi Buddham Saranam Gachami to the ambi tamam saranam gachami tangam saranam gachami to the ambi buddham saranam gachami to the ambi tamam saranam gachami to the ambi sangam saranam gachami Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Actually, I came back from uh, two months ago. I came back from, oh, three months ago. I came back from Cambodia teaching the same meditation technique in a seven day retreat in Phnom Penh and three day, four days retreat in other cities, including Simrip or Angkor Wat. And Cambodia is actually, I have many students in Cambodia who study. Uh, the Pali in my monastery, Mahagandayong Mandalay. If any one of you come to Burma, you can come to visit Mahagandayong. This is my monastery. But actually, I spent in the forest 13 years, oh, 17 years ago. Since 17 years ago, I've been spent in the forest for eight months a year, from March to November, always in the forest. If I don't go any, any other country, in trouble for the teaching Dharma. I was, I'm always in the forest from March to November, and then November to March, I'm always in Mandalay. This is the way that I do. This is the way, and some people confuse where I am, in Mandalay or in the forest. In the forest, eight months a year, and then uh, four months in Mahaka, and I, then I teach them. So here, I just want to tell you what Buddhism exactly means. You know, that I just want to tell you, please, be serious. When you see I just want to show you here. Can you see this? Here in the head, see? Can you, can you say it? Buddhist, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, and Jewish? 
Oh, no, Jewish and Hindu. Can you say it? Buddhist? Please, please, all, all together. We have to be active, not passive. <laughs> Read it. Buddhist, Christian, Hindu, Jewish, and Hindu. Yesterday in Dharma Wisdom Center, I told them, I tried to tell them what Sangha means. And I just tell, let them read and let them recite the excellent qualities of the Sangha. They're nine. They, they all read it very well. I like very much. And I feel immediately sadhu, sadhu. Even they don't say, I say sadhu, sadhu. Because that's what I feel. So here in the, in the head, Buddhist, this is, you know, you learn a lot. Here, my Bachaka Bala told me, you learn a lot. And he teaches a lot too. So you have already that kind of a knowledge. The Buddhist is just the name, right? Just the name. Actual, the, the actuality of the human being or the, the living world is Nama Rupa, right? When you say Nama Rupa, we try to open up our mind to universalize entire world, including everyone. Do you think the Christian has no mind and body? <laughs> what is your do you do you think the Christian has no mind and body? Yes or no? And Buddhist has no mind and body? Yes. They have mind and body. Christian has mind and body. Muslim has mind and body. Hindu has name and form. Nama Ruba, according to the Buddha's teaching, right? So it's on that Nama Ruba, why where does where does the, that name come from? I don't know. You have any idea? Where does that name come from? On that to put on that Nama Ruba? No idea. <laughs> but Nama Ruba itself is enough, right? We are Buddhist or Nama Ruba? Other like Christian is Buddhist or Nama Ruba? Nama Ruba. Mind and matter, mind and matter, mind and matter. Even animal. Do you think animal has any belief or any religion in animal? <laughs> I ask this very, very often, even when I'm in the West. Animal believes in nothing. But they have no religion. But I say oh, very often, animal has no constitution, no uh, prison. They go in the nature. But human beings, we have uh, too many beliefs. And then they fight each other for that kind of beliefs. Not, reality, not for reality, right? If you listen to nowadays, you're very well educated. I, I really... See, the Singaporeans are really well educated. I know. So look, the reality, people are fighting nowadays in the world, not for reality, not for finding reality, but what they are fighting for. For the names, labels, right? This is everybody can understand. This is the reason here when you are thinking yourself Buddhist, it, the Buddhist is formed by the thought. The Buddha said this is just the name. How do you say the Buddha said Panyate in Tapatwa? Vividehi Agadehi Pasadidi Vipassana. This is Pali. Means you have to see things as they are by taking off all the names and labels to find the truth. Right? As long as we are attached to that name, can we find the truth? No. So when we take off the name of Buddhist, when they take off the name of Christian or Muslim or Hindu or Jewish, are we equal, the same, or different? The same. Why those kind of names are disturbing the entire human world, the humanity? Do you think, do you have any idea? <laughs> I think because of those religions. Buddhism is one of that. But the Buddha didn't, re re believe me, the Buddha has never established any religion. What the Buddha taught? is Dharma. Right? Feel with me as a brother, and I feel with you as my sister brothers, then we can be friendly. Otherwise, we are separated. So those names are not established by the Buddha. The Buddha taught Dharma. That Dharma is taught by the Buddha. And I said very often, nowadays we have no Buddha. But do we learn the Dharma? Can we learn the Dharma without Buddha? Yes. From one. From what? From whom? From the Sangha. 
Then what is the Sangha that I often define? The Sangha means those who keep the Dharma alive in themselves by practice. You get it? Can you, can you say it? I just want, because before I go back to my country, I just want to leave you true message to get it in your heart and to get it like so you, you should have a, like a ruler to measure whether it is right or wrong or correct or not. So please, again, Sangha means. By practice. Yeah. Then you have to see the excellent qualities of the, the, the Sangha. So, no, what is this? Good to practice. And Ucho no, straight to practice. Practice means what? To Nibbana, Nirura Sacha. To achieve Nirura Sacha, you have to practice the Eightfold Noble Path, right? Right? So then you can see that Supadipano is support to practice Noble Eightfold Path. Supadipano is to practice Noble Eightfold Path. This is the reason I said Sangha means those who keep the Dharma alive in themselves by practice. Otherwise, well, how can we learn the Dharma? Those who practice the Dharma, those who keep that Dharma alive in themselves can transfer to you truly, right? Otherwise, how can we transfer the Dharma to you? So this is the reason we do it. Sangham Sranam Gachami. It means... Sangha means then who, who, who keep that Dharma alive in themselves by practice. Right? So the, this is the reason I said often we have to do the Dharma Sranam Gachami. It means on, in, when we take refuge in the Dharma, the excellent qualities, six excellent qualities of Dharma, you know this. Sama, Swakadu, Bhagavata Dhammu, Sandeti Go, Akali Go. You get it? Six qualities. Please. Dhamma quality, six excellent Dhamma quality. Swakato, Bhagavata Dhammo, Sandetiko, Akaliko. Can you can you say it? Please say it together. Swakato, Bhagavata Dhammo, Sandetiko, Akaliko, Ehipatiko, Opaneiko, Pachatam Vedita Puvenu Hiti Sadhu Sadhu Sadhu. I will exp explain you when I explain about Mega Sacha together. Then you see that Sangha means Subhatipano, good to practice, Uchubhatipano, straight to practice. That is the practice. How, what is the practice of Mega Sacha? It may, this is the reason, I mean, Sangha means who keeps that Dhamma alive in themselves. Wherever they are, from West or East or from Singapore or from Asia, any country, Sangha should do this. If the Sangha doesn't do this, what will happen, you know? The Dhamma will get lost. Because Sangha is the most responsible, the most responsible community of the Buddha's, for the Buddha's teaching. So you know that Sangha, the excellent quality of Sangha, I will reconnect to the, when I explained about Maga Sacha. Here the, in the picture, this picture is drawn by myself. When I am, it was, you know, 18 years ago, let's say, when I'm in the forest, I, t I sit down. Did like this, in meditation. There's so many things happening in myself, you know. Then I just draw these pictures. And why I'm a Buddhist, I ask myself. You know my background? I studied mathematics before I became a monk. I have no intention to become a monk, actually. But what makes me become a monk? <laughs> really, this is my background. I study mathematics. That trains my mind. Do you know, everybody is well-educated. So when you learn mathematics, just you are reading the problem or are finding the solution. Tell me. Just, but you read it, but not just reading, enjoying reading, right? But for finding solution. Then you get a critical understanding. When you read the, the problems, you're just trying to find solution. That makes, makes you critical. The Buddha is like this, not just reciting, reciting, but try to find the solution. If we don't find solution, you know, we will never get a critical understanding. Right? So this is the reason. I, my background, I have never, never intended to become a monk. And that meditation changed. Why that meditation I did? Because I, was lost, I lost my mother when I was nine, eight years old, boy. And I was suffer a lot for atta being attached to my mother, my late mother. I couldn't 
image. I, I didn't think that she'd passed away. This is my problem. A long time it disturbs me. I finished my university when I was 22. At 21 years old, I was in meditation center. And off and on, and 23, 24, up to 24, I, I'm, I was off and on meditation center. I practiced in meditation. The last time, the first time, I just want to ex tell you the, how this meditation is practically helpful to our day-to-day -day life. Do you think that I lost my mother? Do you think I was alone who lost my mother? Everyone, everywhere, all over the world, you know, everybody. The same thing. This is the reason I said often, we are in the same boat, right? So I, I am the, in the same boat too, but we have to just paddle together to reach Niroda Satcha, according to the Buddha. Buddha's teaching, to free from that kind of attachment that makes us suffer. Attachment is, you know, already samudya sacha. Samudya sacha makes us dukkha, right? To stop that samudya sacha, the maga sacha. Now I'm telling you, my, my practical approach. When I do the first time when I was 21 years old, boy, I did 15 days meditation retreat in Mahasi, of course. That 15 day matter, I did, I did deeply. At the technique, my mind is always critical. I, when I listen to the technique, the technique has no deep philosophy. Because it says, you please pay attention to when you're stretching, stretching, when you're bending, bending, when you're standing, standing, bending, eating, chewing, everything. So is there anything to argue? To, uh, nothing to argue in that technique. And then I accept it. Then I try to do it, seriously. The first time I did it, and whatever I pay attention to, I f I'm fully aware, fully mindful of whatever it is because I have the problems of my attachment with my, to li my late mother. When I do this seriously, I have a full awareness there, full mindfulness there. And that protects. I see that attachment tries to enter my mind. You will see when you do this say in sitting meditation. That attachment very often tries, a number of times tries to enter my mind. But I see this is not me. You understand? Everybody is the same. I see this is not me. This is what, uh, when I was 21 years old, I have no knowledge of Pali. You are just lucky because you learn a lot. I have no understanding of Pali. I have no understanding of anatta. When I say it is not me, it's anatta. Then I started finding, this is the Buddha's teaching, by practice. It's not me. When you see not me, it goes away. It comes back and when you see not me, it goes away. It comes, it goes away means anicca, right? You get it? So this teaching is not away from us, in us. What do we need to do? What do we have to do for finding this anicca dukkha anatta? Three personal practice, middle way, the Eightfold Noble Path, right? I started seeing this the first time. It makes me stuck in the teaching. It get, make me get stuck in the teaching. How this Buddha's teachings in touch in the life. That's 21 years old boy who suffered for that attachment. I can understand the attachment. Then I write a poem. I understand between the difference between the love and attachment. Love is like an angel. Attachment is like a devil. You get it? So this is our friend. The attachment is your friend or you are a stranger. <laughs> How do you feel the attachment is your friend or not? This is our friend, but we have to wisely stop. Don't come. The first you try to be, make a friendship, someone else to make a friendship, when you realize he is a devil, he is evil, can you accept it or reject it? Reject. The first to understand what it is. I know that disturb, just disturb me, that I understand the difference between the love and attachment. Then I write a simple poem, love is like an uh, angel and attachment is like a devil. And love is like a water, attachment is like a fire. You agree with me? Very simple. Everybody can understand. Many Western people enjoy this because it's very clear now. Otherwise, we are confused between love and attachment. What is love? What is attachment? Do you think love makes you suffer? No, love doesn't make us suffer. I came here, I love all of you. 
That brings benefits, right? Right? Yes. That brings benefit. If I don't love you, I will never come. I just want to transfer to you that I, I have practiced for 28 years long. That I want to give you really clear understanding of that meditation. What is in touch and daily life of you. In you, not in the book. You understand? So I, I write this, I like this very much myself. It comes from my own understanding. That love is like an angel, attachment is like a devil. And love is like a water, attachment is like fire. And love keeps keep us warm, uh, attachment makes us burnt. Are you okay? Uh, uh, do you agree with me? Love makes us warm. Now what do you feel with me? This is, and I feel warm with you too, how practical it is. If you are attached to me, <laughs> if I'm attached to you, then we will start burning. When we are burning, what happens? We feel all negative feeling. What happened in each family? You know, when you are just attached to your baby, your children, you started sharing negative emotions into each other. Right? Then I understood I should remain that love to my mother, not attachment. And I can cut it off, that attachment, by understanding. Just the day before yesterday, I met a Burmese guy in my Burmese family who afforded by one meal to me, and he said, how can we stop at that attachment? It's not possible. He <laughs> argued with me. How can we stop, how, uh, stop that attachment? It's not possible. Do, do you feel like this? Is it possible or not possible to stop that attachment? Is it possible to stop it or not? Possible. But if we have to honestly answer, not possible. Really, not possible. But because we, are, we don't want to be wrong, we try to adjust our thought with the Buddha's teaching. Whether if when I'm answered that it's not possible, I'll go against the Buddha's teaching or not, then you say possible. And honestly, it's not possible. Because too deep. But by understanding, by development of understanding, it's possible. Right? I, said to, I told him I, I, the day before yesterday, Attachment is our disease. The patient needs to take first the medicine, right? His disease or disease cannot go away by itself. And he has to take the pills, he has to uh, follow the instructions. When his medicine is okay, cure, all the disease is gone away, right? So I said the middle way is the medicine to cure our problems. That inside, particularly the defilement, kilesa. You know this? You know this already because you study a lot. Do you know Kilesa? So attachment is one of them. Normally people will answer honestly, it's not possible. But I, I can say, tell you, no, it's possible. Not just, you know, blindly, but development of understanding. When you completely understand that attachment is devil, then you just want to let it go. When you start let go, then you feel okay. But not by faith. Faith cannot stop the detachment or cannot remove it. But understanding, wisdom. That we, wisdom should begin with we must not practice, right? This is how this meditation is in touch with all of us. Then if we, are put, if we put on ourselves as a religious name, we will never understand. Then we feel uncomfortable. When I, you know, you have a different friends and a different faith. When I was in school and university, we have a different faith and different friends. We are okay when we are eating, sleeping, going to the toilet, everything's okay. But when we go to our each temple, then we are separated from each other. And I feel uncomfortable whenever we go to our temple each. Don't we feel like this? When you have friends going to the church, or I go to the Burmese temple, or Buddhist temple, I go to the Christian mosque, Muslim mosque, we feel uncomfortable when we leave each other. Why are we are doing like this? Why, what, 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 is, why, 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 what makes, it, makes us different? Actually, the names. When I started understanding that the Buddha teaches us that Vipassana, for example, Panyate Tapetua Vividehi Akarehi Pasatiti Vipassana. You get it? Panyate Tapetua. Can you repeat, if, repeat after me? This is very good for you. It's the meaning, definition of vipassana meditation. Panyata interpetua. 
vividehi agarehi pasati di vipassana it means to practice this vipassana you have to take out all the names and labels to see things as they are I mean to see physical and mental phenomena as they are without mixing with any names and labels without taking any names and labels why the buddha said when we put the names and labels on us we feel different shall we be different or shall we be the same what is your opinion the same or different the same because we are human being right for example when i'm angry when i islam or muslim christian or buddhist or hindu jewish angry this anger is the same there's no name on that anger right do then the buddhist is buddhist anger is not disturbing other people or christian anger is not disturbing other people anger is the same it disturbs everywhere when you get angry right right yes. please otherwise i'll fall asleep <laughs> this is you know i don't like the passive way but should be active keep yourself active this dharma makes it makes my mind active i read one of the book the buddhism and democracy how this dharma opens my mind up it makes me really really amazing when i sit meditation for hours long in the forest you know that doesn't make me sleep fall asleep but you need to practice practice longer see what i mean is here when we are forming i am buddhist do you feel do you form by thought or by heart by thought right when you are forming that i am a christian do you think that by by thought or by heart so everything all the names here in the head we form by the thought this is the reason here when you form that look the, in this picture this picture is really wonderful pictures when we form this above on the head can you see can you read it avicca and tanna av eh? samudya sacha so when you form buddhist you are ruled by samudya sacha when you form a christian you are ruled by samudya sacha everybody who are forming the names they are ruled by samudya sacha but how to stop that you have to come here what is this maga sacha when you try to follow the eight four noble path maga sacha maga sacha i will try to reconnect with this vipassana meditation and the second in the under the title i'm just trying to introduce you the first to be aware of why those kind of names come to us who give us who put our names i said very often when we were young as soon as we were born do you have any idea you are a boy or a girl as soon as you were born you have no idea i have no idea i said very often if my mom calls me a girl <laughs> i'll probably go when this is the name right how could be how could we be a possibly buddhist or christian or anything when we are born right it's just, just i try to clarify your mind otherwise we are turning around and those kind of religions just i my religion is first your religion is second my religion is the best your religion is the worst <laughs> that we're never finished right when you reach that understanding do you think for example if you ask the christian friend you ask when you are born are you are you a girl or boy are you christian or buddhist when you are born no why those kind of name comes to us when we are older because i write in my book one of my book because the society puts all the names on us and when i am a little bit older my mom says please boy come then i start to feel i'm a boy <laughs> if she calls me a girl then i probably feel like a girl you get it yes. why we have you know why we are so much far away from that kind of the truth because the society this is why the buddha came to the world came to the world to share that truth dharma again to to the humanity when you see that dharma everybody is the same if you have that friend ask when we when you when you were born who are you who you are you are a girl or boy i don't know 
And I said, I have no idea. I was too far away from that kind of religion. As soon as you, I'm born, I was born. You may be the same, right? You are already Buddhist when you are born? Yes or no? No. Nobody. If you ask the Christian, the same. Are you a Christian when you are born? They will say no. We are just what? Nama Rupa. Right? Who we are, actually? Nama Rupa. Clear? This is why. So those kind of names are formed in the head. That the Buddha said, take off, take off, take off. Take off those names to find the truth. To see the tr them as they are. You understand? Uh, you are alive or? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yes or not? Yes. Please. I just want to hear. Otherwise I could keep, <laughs> I'll fall asleep. So this is the first part I just want to say. And then I want it now. I, now you know Buddhists, we just form by the thought. Do, do you think that Buddhists exist really or we just form by the thought? Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. My sadhu. It's not your sadhu. Because I feel. <laughs> so then you see, I will try to explain again that what Buddhism is. The definition of the world, the, the word Buddhism. Buddhism, scholarly explained. Buddhism, two words together. The Buddhism can be divided into two words. This is very important for you. This you will never find in any book. One of the Austrian men who followed me for 16 years long, he passed away with the cancer. He said, I have never found that explanation just with you. <laughs> I have never read in any book. Yeah, of course you cannot read, read it because this is from my heart. So Buddhism can be divided into two words. Buddhism. Can you say it? Buddhism can be divided into two words, Buddhism. Can you repeat all this, the full sentence? So, Buddha means wisdom, isn't, if you define the dictionary, isn't means doctrine or system. So, when two words together, Buddhism, meaning system of wisdom or doctrine of wisdom, how beautiful it is, right? You see? So I would say full sentence, Buddhism can be divided into, because this, you have to get it, then you have to transfer to your children again. Otherwise, they confuse what Buddhism is. When they are confused, I feel irresponsible, because I'm in Sangha. Sangha needs to teach them, train them to understand. Otherwise, I'm irresponsible. If they are confused, if one of you are, you are confused at Buddhism, I'm responsible. Right? So this is the reason I'm serious. Buddhism can be divided into two words, Buddhism. Buddha means wisdom, ism means system or doctrine. When Buddhists combine two ism, Buddhism meaning system or wisdom or doctrine or wisdom. Can you be all? <laughs> well, one, one after another, I will, go, I will first go, you should repeat after me. Buddhism can be divided into two words, Buddhism. A little bit louder. <laughs> Bud means wisdom, ism, ism means system or doctrine. So when two words together, when two words join together, Buddhism, Bud, Buddhism becomes Buddhism. Buddhism. Buddhism becomes Buddhism, meaning system or wisdom or system or doctrine. Please, when two words join together, Buddhism become Buddhism, meaning system of wisdom or doctrine of wisdom. How beautiful it is. It's, it, this meaning itself is a great, right? There's nothing to do with the religion when you see this meaning, right? Because there's nothing to believe, nothing to do any prayer to any god. But it's the meaning itself is complete. This is the first. You know, I would just because we have the time limited. Now the first idea. You clear? Yes. Can you say it again? Yes. Please. Buddhism. When two words join together, Buddhism becomes Buddhism, meaning 
system of wisdom or doctrine of wisdom? Sadhu. 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 My sadhu. <laughs> you do it, you get it? Please transfer to your children. Otherwise, they're confused. You understand? You should transfer to your children at home when you are sitting to go, what is the Buddhism? Can you tell me? Then if she is not, please try to transfer this to him. Oh. Also, you should ask too. My son or my nephew or my niece, when you were born, who you are? You are a girl or boy? Do you know how they will say? No? No, we don't know when we were born. Right? Right? If you can go around Singapore, the whole country, ask everyone. Even Prime Minister ask. He will say, no, I don't know. <laughs> really, we don't really know, right? Why, why those kind of names put on us later? It makes us confused. The older we are, the more confused <laughs> we have to face all the troubles in the life. The younger we are, the clearer. Is it right? Yes. We just go through this life. This is the reason I, I try to. Wa I really wanted to meet the children, because I always remember my 21 years old age. I did that meditation when I was young. It really instructs me. It really gives a special knowledge that I have never learned in my mathematics. I said very often this. Finally, my mind itself is the biggest university of all over the world. This in which there are a lot of lessons that we have never learned that come up by meditation. Do you agree with me? This is, university teaches a book. We get it just knowledge from the book, but we don't know how to deal with when we have a problem. <laughs> I will tell you one, one, one true story. Uh, when I was in Cambodia, my uh, Dayaka, do you know Dayaka? Dayaka is the man who donated to the monk, called Dayaka. The woman is Dayika. You don't know this? Let's, okay. This guy, this man, 80 years old, he's a prime uh, education minister for 12 years with the Hon San government. But finally he quit because of his age and he tried to establish a university. And he told me, he finished his uh, doctorate degree in the United States. Look, he is 84 years old. In his time, how education is. He finished doctorate degree in the United States. He speaks very good English, excellent. All of his children can speak too. He, the youngest is my age, <laughs> because he's 84. He was allowed in a business section to work together to, to establish a company. He was allowed by another, he was a cheated by another one. He said, my business doesn't teach me how to protect that cheating. <laughs> he said that. You, you understand? Business doesn't teach how to protect that cheating people. He says, I don't know, my, my, my doctorate degree doesn't work <laughs> for to, to protect those kind of, to prevent those kind of cheating people. Do you think your degree can protect this, prevent from this? No. Then how can we deal with This is the reason. We have a number of problems in the life that we have never learned in school lessons, in university lessons. Then we have to just learn it. Dharma. That Dharma makes us to fight. A Kalayana Mita. You know Kalayana Mita? A friend in Dharma. Do you get it? So the first, okay, I will leave it the first. And second, the core of the Buddha's teaching. And the core of the Buddha's, you know already the Four Noble Truth? You know the Four Noble Truth? Can you say it first? Dukkha. Samudhya. Nirora Sacha. And Marga Sacha. Why don't you say this all? Please, Dukkha, Dukkha Satcha, Samudya Satcha, Niroda Satcha, and Magga Satcha. Okay, this is the core of the Buddha's teaching. And here also, we have, in, even in the Buddha's teaching, there are a number of schools again. And if, for example, if someone comes to you, to say his or her names of the school in Buddhism, how do you feel? How will you feel? You will cooperate together or I reject or I don't know. I often deal with these situations. When someone comes to introduce me from his, his Tibetan or Mahayana or something like that, I ask them, 
you have a phone over truth? They say, yes, that's okay. That's okay. Why do we need to argue with the names, for the names? The phone over truth is okay. It's the Buddha's teaching, right? It's because the Buddha rejects those names and labels. The truth is the phone over truth that, that discovered by the Buddha's enlightenment. So the core of the Buddha's teaching is the phone over truth. Now here the third, the study of Magasaja. Magasaja can be divided into Vipassana Magasaja. Right? So Vipassana Magasaja and Arya Magasaja is a two part. You see? Here, when you are sitting in, here I put the meditative mind here. Because at the moment when you are meditating, now I'm going to do, connect the sitting meditation. When you are meditating, when you are paying attention to the breath, the breath is left or right or in the middle. Please, please. The breath is right or left or in the middle. So this is the reason I put here. I put here in the middle because the Buddha said middle way. So when you see the Magasacha, Vipassana Magasacha and Ariya Magasacha, Vipassana Magasacha must observe, has to discover Anicca, Dukkha, Anatta. You get it? This is Vipassana Magasacha. The Ariya Magasacha can discover the end of Anicca Dukkha. Cessation of Anicca Dukkha. You, you reach that part. The first we have to go with the Vipassana meditation then. Now I say, when you have to do the Vipassana meditation, Vipassana Maga Satcha, the technique that I'm teaching is mindfulness based Vipassana meditation. The first you have to be mindful of your breathing as it is. Mindfulness as it is. It is long, pay attention, be mindful of that long. And if it is short, mindful of short, yes, it is. You shouldn't control this. See as it is. This is the first. If this is not Vipassana yet. It's Samatha meditation when you pay attention to the breathing. Pay attention to the breathing or be mindful of the breathing. It is called Samatha. At that moment, I need to explain you, when you are mindful of that atten- the, the bre- breathing, You have loba, dosa, moha. Can you see it there? When you are mindful of the breathing. When you are really mindful of the breathing, you see the, the, your mindfulness and breathing. There is no loba, no dosa, no moha. When you are doing this intensively. So this is the way this part removes that loba is samudya sacha. It can remove the samudya sacha. Otherwise, we are ruled, or Buddhist, or Christian, or Muslim, all religions are ruled by Samudya Satya. But when the Buddha came to the world, don't, you shouldn't be ruled by Samudya Satya. How to do it? Not to, by, not to be ruled by Samudya Satya. You have to practice the Eightfold Noble Path. Now, when you're paying attention to the breath, mindful of that breath, this is called mindfulness. And when you feel by paying attention to, by being aware of the breath, when you feel sensation here, do you see it? Can you read it? Sometimes you feel on the shoulder, is she? Then you have to just move there, just be mindful of this. Then you have to come back again. When you move here, as soon as you see, this is Samadhiti. But you have to send that attention to that itchy repeatedly, as long as it's rising. You have to pay attention, to f- fully mindful of that, that itchy sensation, as soon as it, dis- until it disappeared. So here the Samadhiti, Samasankapa. When you are doing this, you see when you are fully aware or mindful of that breathing, you are speaking right or, right or wrong, or you are speaking good or bad, you don't speak good or you don't speak bad when you're doing this, right? So, you don't speak good, you don't speak bad, but you are right here in the middle. This is called Sama Vacha, Sama Sankapa, Sama Kamanda, here. Then Sama Vayama, Sama Sati, Sama Samari, these six are called Samata Maganga. They are just in the level of Samata. But as soon as you feel, it's the feeling, sensation on some part of your body. Then you can see it, you can observe it, then two Samadhiti, Samasankapa together, they work. When they are working, 
seriously, attentively, intensively, you have no loba, no dosa, no moha. The smoothness is such as removed, right? If you do one minute, they, they, go, they are gone away, one minute away from you. If you do one hour, they are gone away, one hour from you. So if you do the whole life, they go away. So this is the reason we have to follow that Magasacha to remove all of them. When you do this, as I said, that the attachment or something comes to enter your mind, but you have that mindfulness. Mindfulness protects you. Attention protects you. To prevent this not to come into your, your, your then you will see it is not you. When something comes to you, it is not you, not you, not you, it means anatta. When it goes away, goes back, goes back, it's anicca, anicca. If it is if you don't do this, you will be uncomfortable. That's dukkha. So these three things can be realized by practice of vipassana maga sacha. So shall we do it together? Because the time is too much limited for 20 minutes. I'm sorry. <laughs> the time is too much. Uh, for those latecomers, please keep your phone silent mode because we're going to do meditation now. Uh, yeah, I think we have maybe probably 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes sitting meditation together. I will see. I will, I will. When I say relax, that is, oh, that's over. Okay? So when I say relax, that meditation sitting section is over. Then we will move to question and answer. Then we will go to explain a little bit walking meditation. Then we will do walking meditation for maybe 15 minutes. Now sitting 15 minutes together. To do the sitting meditation, the first important is you have to keep your lower part of the body. It's Palinga Apujitwa sitting cross-legged. Keep it as flat as possible. And Ujjongkaya Panidaya to keep it straight. Then switch on your attention or mindfulness to be my fully mindful of the breathing. As when it comes in, when it goes out, when it comes in, when it goes out. This is the primary level of meditation. Of course, we have to go deeper in the retreat for seven days or ten days. When you do this breathing, mindful of breathing, you have to just be mindful of the natural breath. Why is I said that some technique makes you really heavy breath and deep breath. It is not the teaching of the Buddha. The Buddha teaches to realize, to mindful, to be mindful of the natural breath as it comes in, as it goes out, when it is long. Be mindful of it as it is long. When it is short, be mindful of it because Digamba, Digam, Asasami, Di, Basiti, Sekiti, Rasam, Rasam, Basasami, Di, Sekiti. The Buddha said, Digam means long. When it is long, pay attention as it is long. When it is short, be mindful of it. It is short. This is what the Buddha teaches in Mahastipatthana Sutta. Mindfulness Mahasti Patana Sutta.
If you've never done this meditation, just to be mindful of from the beginning to the end, to see as it is. If you have ever practiced this one, by paying attention to the point, not stall some people is doing, you can do it. There's nothing wrong. For the beginner, the have never learned, never done this. Pay attention from the beginning to the end to see as it is. If you are someone who is used to doing this, you will see the airs coming and going out, coming in as a ceaseless motion through the nose. Yeah, in the talk we uh, we have not enough space, so just we do it in city. Like in the West, the 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 most important part is here to keep your back straight.
At the moment when you're doing this, you are living at the moment. <clears throat> you will feel peaceful and calm in yourself when you're really doing it. At the same time, this mindfulness cleans the stress, depression, anxiety. For the beginner, it will be not easy to be fully mindful of the breathing in and out. We need a time to actually, it is good in the retreat. And in the retreat, every day becomes developed. Okay, relax. Now we are moving to the Q&A section for the sitting meditation. If you are not clear in the talk right now, or maybe your experience, if you have a question, anyone?
You have an extra microphone? If, okay. Okay. Can you stand up? Thank you. Thank you, Bhante. Good evening to you and all. Okay, Bhante, I have a question for us about this practice of mindfulness-based mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, You mentioned about uh, desire and attachment just now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Desire is good, attachment is no good. Yeah. So, uh, no, my question love, now is... Love, love, and uh, love, okay, yeah. love, love and attachment. Okay, love and attachment, right? Yeah. So, love, love to meditate, mm -hmm. attachment to yeah. meditation. Yeah. So, my question is, can a person be attached to vipassana meditation? And is that good or bad? As a, at the beginning, it may be good. Because when you are sotapanna, it's okay. But at, when you are at the level of putrajana, you can be attached to it. This is good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. To, very much. To, atta to be attached to vipassana is really completely okay. good. So to be attached is good. Yes. It. But it comes to a point where you will not be attached. As mm -hmm. you say, you yeah, yeah. reach the stage of sotapanna yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Saido, I have a question on okay. the Mahasatipatthana Sutta. Okay. Okay. Uh, in the Kayanupasana uh, part, in the first few steps, it uses uh, Pajanati, or maybe I know I'm breathing in mm -hmm. long and mm -hmm. so on, but mm. the later states, uh, steps, it makes use of Sikati. Sikati. Uh, so yeah. is there any difference? Is, yeah. is there some yeah, reason it, why? There is a the difference. Okay. Pajanati is almost the sense of Vipassana. Saikati means it is like a samatha. Pajanadi is vipassana. Any question? Yes, one more. Bhante. Okay. You, you mentioned about. Okay, uh, I'm mm -hmm. thinking of the second question to okay. ask you. Okay. You say sotapanna, you will not be attached. Yeah. Why? Can you explain, please? Sotapanna is even attached not too deep. Attachment is anyway, it is samudhya sacha. Right. Okay. When a person reaches the stage of Sotapanna, naturally there's wisdom, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the wisdom yeah. itself will not make it attached to the practice. Are you saying that? Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Any question? Please. Otherwise, we have to move to the walking meditation. <laughs> Hi. So, based my own experience is that mm -hmm. um, whenever I meditate, I tend to be overwhelmed by fear. Mm -hmm. So my mind will suddenly go in a mode whereby I'll be like, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. Okay. So okay. When you feel, I feel the same when I was in the forest the first time. At that time, you have to just pay attention simply breathing. Let go the fear. You have to let go fear. Mm -hmm. Don't observe that fear, but let go. Otherwise, it comes back again, like my attachment, for example. When I'm doing this, the attachment come, try to come to my, my mind, but I always let it go. Should I acknowledge that I'm actually fearful? Yes, you can do it. Why not? Then after that, I just try to breathe yeah, and yeah, let yeah, it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is the way. Thank you. If we have no questions, then... Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, Bante. You talked about, Sister asked, mentioned about fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this fear is an interesting uh, phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I experienced that, you know, when, I'm, when I was practicing, mm -hmm. there's a fear, there's a stage of fear whereby I, I have the fear of moving forward. In mm -hmm. meditation. The fear of moving oh. forward, meaning yeah. to say, I. I fear the unknown, so to speak, you know, because it's the unknown mm -hmm. stage, you know, mm -hmm. unknown area, so mm -hmm. I fear to go mm -hmm. in. And uh, after a while, it's no longer a problem. Mm -hmm. But it's the part that fear that kept her, uh, that hold us back, you know, mm -hmm. because we, we are not certain whether we should move ahead or we should mm -hmm. stay mm -hmm. there. Yeah, and yeah. very often I yeah. stood there for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there is a point whereby we have to break that fear, right? Do we allow that fear to come, to come and be overcome naturally or we have to force it? We, no, we don't need to force it. But you see that when you have really, really intensive mindfulness here, you realize that comes. But it cannot enter your mind. You have to just let go, let go, let go. Uh -huh. This is the way. Okay, you can't force, yeah, you can't force be, it. When you are trying to uh, let fear come, it means you have no protection of mindfulness here. 
So when you have that mindfulness, this is the reason I said base mindfulness base vipassana. When you are strongly mindful of the breathing or attention and whatever, it comes, you see. It goes away. Comes, goes away. It's vipassana. Right? So this is the way it should go together. And the fear, it could be partly due to the lack of confidence in the yeah, practice. Yeah, of course, of course, of course, right? of course. Thank you. Okay. The question, if it is not, we should move to the walking. Because walking okay. would be very um, practical for you. MBDF member, please help to direct the audience to the shrine now, hall. So, so we have already nine. <laughs> already almost nine. The others, please move to the front. Okay, we'll, we'll, go, we'll move to the shrine hall. You can leave your bags here if you want. We can go by the rear. Also, the front. Also if you want to leave your bags here, you can, right? Just move quietly to the uh, shrine hall. Uh, please move. Please move slowly. Please move slowly. Please move okay? mindfully to the shrine hall. Thank you for your help. Okay, we, if we're all here. The last subtitle of this topic is The Benefits of This Meditation Discovered by Scientific Research. This we are doing here, I will tell you. When we are doing walking meditation, our attention is there in the touch. At the same time, you can see there is no stress. Did, do you find the stress when you are paying attention to your touch? No stress. And no anxiety? No depression? These kind of things, stress, anxiety, depression, these kind of things are dominasa. So the Buddha said, Dukkha Domina Sanam Atangamaya. It means to achieve the end of all these kind of Dukkha, Domina Sanam. We see now when we are paying attention to the touch, we see the end of stress, at the end of depression, the end of anxiety, how practical it is. This is the reason these days the scientists are following, tracing the Buddha's teaching, the Dharma, not Buddhism. Because Buddhism is religion. Dharma is not religion. Dharma is the natural phenomena who we are now, Nama, Ruba. There's nothing to do with any names and labels in the Dharma. But Buddhism is a religion because if you feel yourself Buddhist, you reject, you feel different from other people, this is not good. I feel when, as soon as I knew this Dharma by practice, I have no names and labels at all. I said, I, pray, I wear this uniform, why? I just want to be Sangha. So if I don't want to be Sangha, I can leave, doesn't matter. The Buddha doesn't tell you, you have to permanently Sangha. He doesn't say that, you can leave whenever you want. But I started for one week of this life, now already 29 years old. <laughs> My father was afraid when I do this, when I did this. So I just want to tell you that scientifically he have validated the benefit. This is came from a Dr. Sarah Lisa from United States. She is in Massachusetts University. The scientifically validated the benefits. This why I'm seriously saying this. My mind is really scientific, and you all educated. I believe your mind is scientific, and your children, please, you have to transfer to them. Otherwise, they think what Buddhism is. 
They feel religious, the religion, and they feel confused at other religions. I have many things to talk, but we have a very limited time. A retreat is much better, seven days. And practice and talk, practice and talk, that's much better. Now here, what the scientists found, decreased stress. You see? When you do this, not just decrease, you don't find the stress there when you're doing this, right? If you are doing 24 hours now, you can remove this stress. You don't need any pill. One of them, the doctor said, most of the psychological problems, nothing to do with the pills, just with the mind. If you take this meditation, they can remove easily. They can be removed. So now the one, one result, it decreased stress and reduced the symptoms associated with the depression, anxiety disorders, pain, insomnia. Insomnia, some people suffer for this and some people ask me, well, while they are paying attention to the breath, they fall asleep. Is it okay? It's good. You don't need to take any pill. <laughs> this is the result of that meditation, right? It's really, it's not joking. But if you do this, when you are lying down on bed, I teach people very often, when you're lying down to sleep on your bed, please pay attention to your own breath if you are alone. Then you go to deep sleep and you wake up clearly. And that makes you a day start. And then I said, as soon as you wake up, this is serious instruction, as soon as you wake up, don't get up immediately. How you have to do, you have to just stretch out your hand and your legs and make yourself comfortable. Then bring your mind back to attention to the breathing. Pay attention to the breathing. Just two minutes before you get up. Can you do it? Can you do it from tomorrow onward? Can you register on my website? <laughs> <laughs> really, I do this. Think of me if you cannot do this. I do this. Those who I advise them, they do it. Some people come up more to do this. From beginning two minutes of in lying down meditation. But as soon as you wake up, you don't need to wash your face. I said, before you, before you wash your face, please wash your mind. <laughs> By paying attention to the breath. You get it? Yes. I believe you will do this. I just want to believe that you will do it. Okay? This how how we should start. We should begin our day, the first hour, first minute. Then the last one is enhance your ability to pay attention. If you do this, now I have that, uh, that ability. I can pay attention. Well, I told you already, when I walk to the riverside, I teach them that Vincent, for example, he came with me. Please pay attention that you are your step, this is <laughs> your touch, this is the time you have to do it. Then when you pay attention, you are not distracted. By the, by the people that are crowded, walking around. So ability to pay attention that you can enhance. That say, the, the last one is increased quality of life, how nice it is. How scientific found the te the, this teaching. If we don't know this, you see that Buddhism is religion, nothing to do with the science, that's wrong. The Buddha is the greatest scientist of the scientists in the world. You get it? Okay, then I want to move another one. Now the brain research, neuroscientists found. Can you read it? Can you read it? The meditative state. Here down, meditators with six months practice. This alpha way, you know, see? Alpha way developments like this. The brain changed. Yellow color is the brain development when you do six months meditation. When you do three years meditation, look how your brain is developed. This is not religious, scientific discover. You know, why would you, shall we do it or not? Yes. Just do it from, you when, as soon as you wake up. I'm really serious, two minutes a day. Then when you go to the toilet, <laughs> can you do the, the meditation in the toilet? Yes, yes of course. Yes, I write in one of the, my books, The Buddhism and Democracy, I write the meditation in the toilet. Everybody's interested in why we should do meditation in the toilet. Because Buddha said, Aukchara pasava kame sambhajana kari hoti. It means even when you are in the toilet, please switch on your attention, pay attention to your own breath or sensation and you, what you feel at the moment. So I do this when you are sitting down on the seat of the toilet, you can just switch on your attention and pay attention. At least five minutes you can do this. At the same time you are doing toilet, but you, pay, you meditate too. Two things together done. 
how beneficial it is. If you think it professionally or you know, financially, everything's fine. Right? I'm not encouraging, but do it your own, you know, by your own understanding. This is really, do these days, scientists are tracing the Buddha's teaching. Do you know, you, you know already that what Albert Einstein said? It was in Princeton University when he was alive in the United States. He said, if there is any religion that could cope with, cope with modern scientific needs, it would be Buddhism. He said that. He said, of course, that religion of the future will be a cosmic religion. You probably know this. Religion of the future will be a cosmic religion. He said, it should, should, should. He said that. It means whatever. Not Buddhism. He cover. He conceal. It should transcend dogma and avoid theology. It should, he said. If Christians should, it should be a future religion, universal religion. If Muslims should, it should be universal religion. But finally, he found that Buddhism is, the Buddha's teaching is, the only thing that can exist, modern science. How nice it is. You get it? Don't fear it is religion. It is really, if you, even if you use religion, it is scientific religion. Not, you know, faith religion, blind faith religion. You get it? This is another one, and the, the last one. In the West nowadays, in a psychological, psychotherapist, they use it like a treatment, mindfulness. What do you practice? Now here, mindfulness is useful to treat. Can you read it? Stress. stress. Then the first mindfulness that can treat the stress. Now you experience. When you pay attention to your breath or touch of the foot, the foot to the ground, do you find stress or attention? No stress, right? This is what the first experience. So mindfulness is useful to treat depression, heart flashes, Eating disorder, if you have no taste for food, please practice this. Then you will get tasty again, really. This is scientific research. And a hypertension, this is the more useful. If you are really get, suffer for hypertension, do it. Your hypertension becomes decreased. So you have these days, many people are suffering for this hypertension. Then they take retreat and they try to reduce it without any pill. And the, the, this one is pain. And AGD, in a panic disorder, I say a panic disorder when you're feeling like a fear. That do it, this meditation. Insomnia, you don't need to say this. When you, when you do this meditation, you get easily sleep. <laughs> it's a good thing. And also smoking cessation, cessation. When you're too much smoking, if you cannot deal with this, take this meditation, take retreat for seven days or maybe ten days, then you can stop smoking. The last one is wonderful. How Buddha is. You know, how the Buddha's teaching, this mindfulness is. Sexual dysfunction. It can even heal the sexual dysfunction. It's too much, you know, how the Buddha is, <laughs> really. So do you see this, all of these benefits discovered by the, by the scientists? Then how you have to do, how you need to do this meditation. I hope you will do it from, the, from more, this morning onward. I hope you will keep on doing this. May you find time to do this every day as soon as you wake up before you get up. Sadhu.